This is part 42 of JavaScript tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss event capturing in JavaScript. In part 40 of this video series, we discussed what event bubbling is in detail. With event bubbling, the events get bubbled up from the innermost element to the outermost element in the DOM hierarchy. With event capturing, the opposite happens. The event gets captured from the outermost element to the innermost element. In real world, event capturing is rarely used. Let's understand event capturing with an example. Let's flip to Visual Studio. So notice here within the body section, we've got three div elements nested inside each other. And look at the IDs of these div elements. We have set them from div1 to div3. And also notice for each of the div elements, we have set their style class to div style which is defined within the head section. So this style class is going to make the div element display like a table cell with five pixel solid black border. And when we run this page, it looks like this. Notice the div elements are displayed like a table cell with five pixel solid black border nested inside each other. At the moment, when we click on these div elements, notice nothing happens. That's because we haven't assigned an event handler function for the click event. Now let's go ahead and assign a click event handler function. And let's do that using add event listener method. So within the HTML, within the body section, let's include a section for our script. Script type equals text slash JavaScript. First, let's get all the div elements. So I'm going to use a variable called divs. Let's use get elements by tag name function to get all the div elements. And we want to get all the elements that has got div tag. So this variable now is going to contain all these three div elements. Now let's go ahead and use a for loop. So for var i equals zero, i less than divs dot length, i plus plus. Divs of i dot, now let's use add event listener method. And remember, we discussed this method in detail in part 40 of this video series. This method has got three parameters. The first parameter is the event for which we want to assign the handler. So the event is click event. And the second parameter is the name of the event handler function. At the moment, we don't have a click event handler function. So let's first go ahead and write that function. Let's call this click handler. And all this function is going to do is display a message saying which div element click event is handled. For example, if it is div1, then we want to display a message saying div1 click event handled. So for that, we need the ID of the div element on which we have clicked. And to get the ID attribute value, we're going to use get attribute function. So this dot get attribute of ID. So that's going to return us the ID value of the div element upon which we have clicked. And then to that, let's append this message. Click event handled. So the second parameter is going to be the name of the event handler function, in this case, click handler. And remember, the third parameter is called phase. And with event bubbling, we have set that parameter to false. Now when you set the third parameter to true, then event capturing is enabled. If we set it to false, then event bubbling is enabled. So at the moment, event bubbling is enabled. So let's save these changes, reload the page, and now let's click on div3 element. Notice that it says div3 click event handle, and then the event gets bubbled up to div2. So that's the reason it says div2 click event handle. From there, it gets bubbled to its parent, which is div1. So it says div1 click event handled. So with the event bubbling, the event is bubbled from the innermost element to the outermost element in DOM hierarchy. With event capturing, the opposite happens. The event gets captured from the outermost element to the innermost element, that is from div1 to div2 and then to div3. So let's look at that in action. So to enable event capturing, all you do is set this third parameter to true. Save the changes, reload the page, 
and look at what's going to happen when I click on this div3 element. Look at that, it says div1 click event handle and then it gets captured to div2 so it says div2 click event handle and then from there it goes to div3 div3 click event handle. So with event capturing the event gets captured from the outermost element to innermost element from div1 to div2 and then to div3. Now IE8 in the earlier versions does not support add event listener method. This implies that event capturing is not supported in IE8 and earlier versions. So obviously that also implies that this piece of code will not work in IE8 and earlier versions because this add event listener method is not supported in IE8 and earlier versions. Stopping event capturing is very similar to stopping event publishing. Now we use stop propagation method on the event object. So let's see how to disable or stop event capturing. So this is the event handler function. To this function I'm going to pass the event object and then on the event object I'm going to call stop propagation method. So now let's reload the page and click on div3, notice that it says div1 click event handle and then once I click OK it doesn't get captured further. Okay, So when I click div2 it still says div1 click event handle and it doesn't get captured further. Once you click on div1 it still says the same thing. Now using add event listener method with the last argument set to true is the only way to enable event capturing. If the third parameter is set to true, event capturing is enabled, and if it is set to false, event bubbling is enabled. If you want both bubbling and capturing to be enabled, then assign handlers two times, once with the phase parameter set to false, and once with the phase parameter set to true, as you can see here. So with both event capturing and bubbling enabled, events are first captured from the outermost element to the innermost element and then bubbles up from the innermost to the outermost element. So let's look at that in action. First let's remove this event.stop propagation. So now at the moment you know, we have not stopped event bubbling or capturing. And here with this third parameter set to true we have enabled event capturing. Now let's go ahead and enable event bubbling by setting this parameter to false. Save the changes, reload the page. Notice that when I click on div3 what's going to happen? So the f first the event is captured from div1 to div2 and then to div3 and notice that because of that we get div1 click event handle, it says div2 click event handle and then div3 click event handle now after the capturing phase it starts the bubbling phase so it starts again with div3 and then bubbles from div3 to div2 and then to div1 so once I click OK it's going to say again div3 click event handle and then it starts bubbling up to div2 and then to div1 thank you for listening and have a great day